Once again, my friends, Guyanese friends at home here in Guyana and in the diaspora. In the background, we're listening to 2022 Soka Mix, Soka Kickoff Jam. With Jam Lyrical, Skinny Fabulous, Patrice Roberts, Marcel, Bunji, Motto, and Mr. Killer. This is the second installment of GJ's. Well, you know who is GJ? George Churton. That's GJ. So, once again, it's the second installment of GJ's podcast. There is a slight change in the presentation compared to the first one that you listened to. It will not be in the format of a live podcast. Instead, it has been pre-recorded. The main reason is to ensure non-interference of what you eventually hear. What was presented to you by Facebook in the first installment had several statements that were blocked and you would have known from the pauses in the presentation. But I have to take responsibility for that and adjust to suit the situation to ensure that nothing can be taken out of context. If you had that experience, my sincere apologies. As I said, these podcasts are for business, not entertainment. We and I have to prepare the case against Soka Scotia Bank, who wants to rob me of my hard-earned money and property. However, I will only allow that if they secure a ruling in the court. They have the money, I suppose, to hire the best legal or criminal minds available. So the ball is in their court. Today's podcast. Here is the second of nine. Second shot for nine for Scotia Bank to answer quickly. By the very way, by the way, if any of you saw replies to my first bang of nine, please let me know. There's silence, and I mean the silence of Scotia Bank is deafening. All I would like Scotia Bank to do is to return my transport for my property because at this stage I have already repaid more than 1.8 million dollars to them and I've written to them, I've told them in no uncertain terms that I will not be making the payment of a blind cent to them no more of George Jordan's money. Here are the second set of nine. Second shot for nine questions. And I hope that they will answer truthfully. Here, the first question Question number 10. Scotiabank, tell me, 
what was the value of my original mortgage application to you in the year 2016? The records, my records have shown that my mortgage application to you in 2016 was originally for a sum of $1.5 million. But in the final analysis, I got $1.5 million. But I had to raise my mortgage value to $1.8 million. And imagine, I only got $1.5 million in my hands. It means, therefore, that Scotiabank Guyana deducted $300,000 as interest, interest, because they gave me a credit card to shop online and since 2050, they had refused my application for a Scotiabank Visa debit card, which of course is what I used to use from Scotiabank, not Guyana, not Scotiabank Guyana, Scotiabank Bahamas. Now, how can it be that the same entity, Scotiabank, the only difference is one is in Guyana and one is in the Bahamas. And the one in the Bahamas was allowing its customers to have access to Visa cards, both credit or debit. The customers made a choice. And I had a series of three Visa debit cards up to 2015. When I returned in 2013, I had just got a renewal and it expired in 2015. So, that's question number 10. Come on, Scotiabank. Tell the Guyanese people about Mr. Jordan's application for a mortgage, what was the original mortgage, and why he was forced to raise it if he wanted to have 500,000 or half a million dollars left on the savings and for you to write a check which you did of one million dollars to pay a storage to GNIC for my vehicle which was there on the wharf in your wharf in GNIC's wharf facilities for three years. Question number 11. Tell the Guyanese people why did I have to raise it? That same mortgage. You tell them. I've told them. If you have a different reason, tell them why. That's question number 11. Question number 12, Scotiabank. Did I, George Jordan, present proof to Scotiabank Guyana? that I was accustomed to using a Scotia Bank Bahamas Visa debit card, which expired in 2015. That is question number 12. Question number 13, Scotia Bank, Soka Scotia. Did Scotia Bank Guyana deduct credit card interest from my final mortgage disbursement? Answer that question. Did you deduct a sum of $300,000 from my final mortgage when you were disbursing it? Question number 14. What was the value of my original mortgage application, Scotiabank? What was the value? What was I asking for in 2016 from 
school bank Guyana when I mortgage my property. Question number 15. What would have been the mortgage interest on that mortgage, the original mortgage, of $1.5 million? What would have been that? So that is question number 15. Question number 16. Just a minute. Yes. Question number 16 for Scotiabank. Would Scotiabank Guyana say that they were treating their customers fairly over this issue of Visa credit cards? The question here is, why was Scotiabank denying its Guyanese customers access to Visa debit cards. Why is it, Scotiabank, that you were only bringing Visa credit cards? So really, you were forcing your customers into a situation that they had money on your bank, they wanted to shop online, but you, Scotiabank, were only giving them access to Visa credit cards. Question number 17. Why has Kosher Bank Guyana made two attempts to sell their assets to another bank? If you're selling out, it says that your organization has become unprofitable. You're not making money like you were accustomed to making Scotia Bank. Now, if a business isn't making money, the normal thing for the business to do is to declare bankruptcy. But I guess you have good reasons why you don't want to declare bankruptcy. Scotia Bank made an attempt in 2018. In 2018, Scotia Bank declared that they wanted to sell their assets to Republic Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. And the administration of the day at that time denied them, said, no, we'll not allow you to sell your assets. Then, up comes two years later, a new administration is in place in our society, a new government, and Scotia Bank again declares that they would like to sell their assets this time they wanted to sell it to Citizens Bank, first Citizens Bank or whatever it's called, and the present administration told them no. Why are you selling out if everything is okay with Scotia Bank? And the final question, question number 18, is it true? Scotia Bank, that in your earlier years of operation, Scotia Bank used to publish end of year reports showing massive operational profits. Could you say whether this statement is true? And could you say what was the kind of profits that Scotia Bank was making in the early stages of its operation? At this point, I will end, as you will are aware, it's nine. So, I am knocking Scotia Bank Guyana for nine. You know, in cricket, 
the best that you could do in cricket is to hit for six. Well, I am knocking Scotiabank for nine, and this is my second nine shot. I'm waiting to hear as early as possible. Because Scotiabank, if you don't do it, if you don't reply, if you say nothing, well, you'll be faced with a different situation. But, friends and supporters, listen. Keep on listening. There's another nine coming up. So, look forward to it. Stay safe. And spread the word. Tell others the points that I have made. You can always share this video. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. And stay safe.